Joe Burrow gives an update on his wrist rehab and when he expects to be cleared. Plus, we'll wrap up the combine in today's episode. You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Bengals fans and welcome to another episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. I'm your host Jake Lisko. He's your host James Rapine. We're the Locked On Bengals podcast on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcasts. If you're new to the show, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you don't miss an episode. We come in every day or we appreciate everyone who does that and doesn't miss an episode here on Locked On Bengals as we'll have you updated all offseason on everything going on with free agency right around the corner. We'll have Brad Spielberger from PFF on a little bit later this week. As we get into our free agency previews, as that's next week. It's time. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel, where you can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet at FanDuel.com slash locked on. And James, today we start with Joe Burrow, who we haven't talked about for quite a while as we've been getting through combine stuff. And we really haven't had much news, but some quotes emerge from Joe Burrow at a charity event on Sunday, giving an indication of when he expects to resume various activities related to his return to football. Yeah. The fact that, you know, he, he was pretty direct about throwing in May and and that's when he's hoping to, to be fully cleared and telling shout out to Ben baby um, for, for getting this. But yeah, I think that's kind of in line with what we had hoped when he talked in January was May and all systems being go and moving forward in May. And it feels like that's the case. He w- didn't have anything on his wrist, which I thought was was interesting, telling Ben that he he was pretty much lifting like normal now too, which is a, a really good sign, I would say. Uh, now, I'm sure there's still things that he's being delicate with, but this is a serious wrist injury. We've pretty much tried to hammer that home as much as possible, how serious this wrist injury is, is for Joe. And the beauty is, is he has the time. He doesn't have to play through anything. No, let it heal. And I think he's letting it heal and all signs are, are pointing to that. So the fact that he's willing to say, oh, yeah, I'll put a timeline on it. I'll say mid-May. I think that's a really, really good sign. And in the article, Ben Baby for ESPN, where this article is, wrote that he started throwing small medicine balls, not footballs, but started throwing in the process of returning to throwing football, small medicine balls as he is recovering from the injury. Burroughs' quote was, I think middle of May is where I'm expecting to be cleared for full contact and everything. Over the next month to month and a half, we'll decide all those things. So not a firm date, but he expects May to be a clearance. So that means that you should get some participation potentially, or or the door is open, I should say, not that you should get. The door is open for participation for Burrow and some of the off-season program stuff into the summer before the break before training camp and hopefully training camp is is no wrist injury anymore in the rearview mirror hopefully not something that he's thinking about at that point and like you said james a a pretty significant topic for burrow is just returning to lifting it's something that we know he likes to take care of in the off season and regular season but we know that he has a process for taking care of his body he went out and said that he's excited about returning to lifting and talked about he'll be doing what he's done the last couple of years, just two extra 12 extra weeks of rehab work in the rear view was, was what his quote was. And one other thing, James, before I toss it back over to you, he did have still a light wrap on that wrist at times during that charity event. We've seen that be on and off. So it's not a full-time thing anymore. It's a light wrap more than it's a brace, but you still occasionally do see just for everybody who saw that and is, is correcting you. You do occasionally still see, uh, a little bit of a wrap on that wrist. Sure. And that, the the one I saw, it wasn't, so maybe he took it off for something and then put it back on or whatever the case is, but it, it is progress. It isn't what it looked like in January, right? When I, I last saw him. So that's, that's about as, as good as you could have hoped. I, I do think, do you have anything else on the injury before I get to the, the comments about the off season? 
Nothing except to say that, like you said, we've talked about how serious the injury is. The team continues to be optimistic in his recovery. Burrow is continuing to participate in events as if his recovery is on schedule. And I think that that's all there is to say about that. We'll see how he does when he's back in football activities. But he did have some other interesting things to say, to your point. Yeah, he did. He said, quote, these are the, the two quotes that really stand out. We need the guys that we draft to come in and be productive and take on the leadership roles that we've lost the last couple of years. And we need to bring in the right pieces this offseason too, whether it's the draft or free agency. So that's not calling out, but making it clear. Hey, Dax Hill, Jordan Battle, DJ Turner, like Miles Murphy, we need you. Charlie Jones, Andre Yosevash, whoever it is in, in, over the past couple of years that they've drafted, we need those guys to step up and you also need to get it right in free agency in the draft, which is what we've been saying. Maybe he maybe he was listening to Locked On Bengals, you know. That might be what Joe was doing on his Sunday morning. He said, like I said, the injuries were what they were last year, but we weren't good enough in a lot of different places to make a Super Bowl run, in my opinion. Why this is interesting to me is he says it, and he knows when he said it. Like, for example, when he talks about T. Higgins, he knows what that means. So months ago when he said, I expect T. to be back, that's a message to T, and that's also a message to the Bengals. Even if he doesn't want it to be or isn't intending it to, it is. This is, too. And I think it's pretty pretty clear. Hey, I want you to get free agency right, and you better get it right, because it isn't as simple as getting me healthy and expecting, expecting us to make a Super Bowl, because we need to make clear upgrades and, and clear changes on the roster. Yeah, it'd be really easy for him to sit there and say, you know, I was hurt. We, we could have, who knows what would have happened if I was healthy? Who knows? We, 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 sh we could have been there. We should have been. And, we, and we've done that. We've said that, hey, when Burrow's healthy, they always have a shot. And, and I think we both I think they did. That. As right. flawed as they were, I still think they did. But yeah. But it, it's easier to sit there and say that, which we've done, versus the honesty that, that Joe Burrow puts on display here. And also, beyond just the honesty, and maybe that's all the intention is from Joe Burrow. But like you said, there's... Subtle or not so subtle pressure on the organization expressed here. We need to fill the leadership roles that we've lost in Jesse Bates. We need to fill the leadership role that we lost with Von Bell. We need to get players who are going to come in here, hit the ground running, contribute right away. We cannot have the level of performance that we had last year in numerous spots and expect to be back to the Super Bowl. We've been there. We've been to the AFC Championship game and have been a decimated offensive line about going to two in a row and winning an arrowhead twice in a row. And they were very close in, in 2022 as well. So they know what it looks like. Burrow sure as heck, heck knows what it looks like. He did it in college too. He won a national championship in college. He's been to the top in the NFL and has been right on the doorstep of winning that game. And so you get a little bit of that subtle or not so subtle pressure and, and very clear when, when you read between the lines even a little bit. And the honesty and showing the maturity. I think that it, it is always noteworthy when Burrow says stuff like this and kind mm -hmm. of puts his feelings about the off season or, or personnel decisions into the world. And this is no exception. Yeah, it it's, it's very noteworthy. And I will say, because the Bengals are aware as, as well, I think they feel the pressure, just the vibe at the comma. I think they know that, <laughs> They have this guy in Joe. They have great players around him. They need to get even more if they're going to, to be able to do what they ultimately hope to because there aren't as many. The roster is, has, has weathered down some, and there's going to be changes, and that's why they need to maximize that and nail it in the draft, nail it in free agency. And that's why we, later this week, we're going to spend a ton on free agency. That's why, like you mentioned, we're going to have Brad Spielberger on and who knows? Maybe they can find the, the diamonds in the rough. Maybe they'll take a big swing in free agency. It depends on who gets tagged on Tuesday. But I, I do think that they're they're very much aware. And, and so much so that that might be why Joe made those comments. Because it's just how they're speaking right now. Knowing that they need to be better. And, and when that, when everyone feels that way, then it, you know I think it makes it easier yeah. to reach that goal and, and find the, the right guys that they need to target the right players in free agency in the draft. So we'll see if they can do that. But speaking of draft, 
Let's get to the NFL Combine. Let's get to the trenches. Everyone grilled us in, on YouTube yesterday. They're not talking trenches. Well, we're about to talk trenches next. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? Would you comment on the Locked on Bengals podcast and say that they need to talk about the trenches more? That's great for us. I love it, and we're going to do that in just a second. The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you, to make it a priority, and you can do that with therapy. Therapy can help you find what matters most to you so you can do more of it. And BetterHelp is perfect for someone with a busy schedule. And I'm sure if you're listening to this, heck, you might be listening to this on like one and a half speed. I know a lot of our listeners do that because you're busy. BetterHelp gets that. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and you get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists at any time. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on. Let's talk offensive line, James, to start this episode. Unfortunately, where I was hoping we would spend a lot of time, Marius Mims in a freaky short shuttle that was a data entry error is not where we're going to spend a lot of time. If you saw, Anything about Amarius Mims at 340 pounds running the fastest offensive tackle shuttle time since Jake Fisher. Unfortunately, that was, in fact, fake news. It was a data entry error. It was actually Mason McCormick, I think. It was just an alphabetical order issue there. But that notwithstanding, I, I thought it was a really impressive day for a number of offensive tackles. J.C. Latham, unfortunately, did not test. Joe Alt, of course, went out there and showed that he was the top athlete and top prospect, I think, for most at tackle. But for some guys you can dream on, Taliese Fuaga and Olu Fashanu and Troy Fatanu, Kingsley Suamataia, all went out and had really nice days at the tackle position. and. Several of those guys, certainly in position to be first-round consideration. I think Amarius Mims, once he recovers from the slight hamstring strain and completes his testing at his pro day, is going to show that he is every bit the freak athlete that we think he is and just looking at the way he's built. The Georgia coach said it. One of the lowest body fat percentages on the Georgia roster at 340 pounds, and it mm -hmm. looks like that when you look at the way he's built. So if you're looking at tackle, I'd say it's pretty exciting at the top. And then, you know, once you get beyond the top, you can talk about some of the other guys on this list as well who performed at the Combine. But some tackles firmly checking boxes if you're considering one of them at 18. Let's talk about Amarius Mims first because now he's he's injury prone and people don't want to touch him and all of those things. Amarius Mims has a chance to be the best tackle in this class. He might end up being better than Joel. His ceiling is extremely high. And so he will be very much in consideration at 18. I don't think he makes it there, to be honest. I don't think he's on the board when the Bengals pick. But this idea that he should be faded because he had a slight hamstring pull at the combine is crazy to me. And, oh, well, he didn't play a lot at Georgia. Okay, well, he still may be the best offensive tackle in this class when it's all said and done. All right, ran over. Uh, I, I think a lot of these guys. For, for they, a second, just to talk about some of the things he did. Because he was almost 6'8", 340 pounds. He had a 90th percentile broad jump at 340, which is insane. His vertical left something to be desired, but it sounds like Duke Bennyweather, who's been training Amarius Mims, expects that to be much better at his pro day, was shocked and went so far as to say that can't be right. That's not correct when he saw the vertical jump reported. Ran a, a 507 40 at 340. That's freaky stuff. And by the way, has arms that are over 36 inches long which is bananas you got length you got size chucking a lot of boxes there and to people who are talking about the inexperience and see Marius Mims as a project I think we've said this before but the technique is there he just hasn't been able to stay on the field and part of that was the, the injury that he sustained last year was a high ankle sprain that he got rolled up on like that's not an injury prone issue he had a 300 pound man fall into his leg what do you want him to do but anyway sorry James go ahead yeah 
Thank you for clearing that up because he is one of those freaks. And if the freak is there at 18, it's going to be hard for me to pass on him, just to be very clear. And the Bengals probably won't pass on him. So if you're against Amarius Mims, start digesting it now. But he probably won't be there anyway because he's one of the top 17 prospects in this class for me. And, and I think it's pretty clear. But the depth is there. And what I, I think, what I am willing to guarantee, it's not a, a offensive tackle at 18, but we will see an offensive lineman for the Bengals go off the board with their first three picks for sure. I think it's first two. Not willing to guarantee that because you just never know. But I, I think their most likely scenario is they take an offensive tackle at 18. If not, I think there will be a guy there at, at 49 because there are guys like, one, Kingsley Suamatia, you, you've been on this. He's going to be a first rounder. He, he, he probably 18 might be a little rich, right? Mm -hmm. But it feels like he's going to go in the first round. Or early. Will Jordan, or, or, yeah. Will Jordan Morgan make it to you? 49? I don't know. Will Roger Rosengarden make it to you at 49? Will Tyler Guyton make it to you at 49? Rosengarten should. I, I think that's probably I, early for him. But to well, your point. But okay, so 80? Because it's not early if he's going 60. And that's the other element here. Is is if if they're going to take one, they need to find the ones they like and take them. <laughs> and, and not wait because they will go. And there's a reason they'll go. So if if it's the 60th, he's projected to go 60th, well then then take him at 49. If he's projected to go 19th and you really love him, and there's not a clear cut prospect that's way ahead of him like if you have the what would you do if they have the 17th if they have a corner at 17 on their board mm -hmm. and it, this won't be the case but corner at 17 on their board and kingsley suomatia is 19th which one are you doing well for 17 and 19 i would i would veer tackle yeah now if it's nine it's a no-brainer you go with nine whatever nine is you know because nine is going to be something really good but the depth in this class i don't want to understate it because i think it's there i also think if they want to get one of the good ones you probably need to do it in the first two picks there, there is depth but when you have quality depth the guys just fly off the board and you're going to see that at wide receiver and at offensive line this year at offensive tackle in particular and this has been called one of the best offensive line classes in two decades if not the best offensive line class in two decades. And I think a lot of that is to the depth because we just had the Penny Sewell, Rashawn Slater class, and that was a really good offensive line class at the top as well. And we shouldn't forget about interior offensive line. Of course, we didn't see Jackson Powers Johnson test, unfortunately, but Dominic Pooney from Kansas went out there and hit the magic number for the short shuttle. That means he is certainly worth watching, but on the interior offensive line, a bunch of guys testing in the 90th percentile or better for offensive linemen as well, including Cooper Beebe, from Kansas State, Christian Mahogany testing unexpectedly well, in my opinion, out of Boston College, interior offensive line prospect, and Tanner Bordellini. I don't know if anyone helped themselves more than Bordellini, the center from Wisconsin, again, putting some freaky numbers up in his testing process, and Brandon Coleman, TCU, play tackle, play guard, a guy with positional versatility was the top of the leaderboard for offensive guard testers at the Combine, but... One thing that I want to caution for everyone who's looking at the RAS.football tables and just looking at the green numbers is Brandon Coleman, for example, did not do agility drills. And so that 9.98 RAS score, that 99.8% athleticism doesn't include agility testing. And that might just be yet. They might add this later. Bordellini, for example, I know did agility testing and on RAS.football, that test is not in there yet. So uh, all that is to say, we'll see how Jackson Powers Johnson does at his pro day, in addition to J.C. Latham, in addition to Amarius Mims. A little bit disappointing that we didn't get to see more from those guys, but a number of players here did check important boxes and showed off, showed off athleticism that I think teams were hoping to see, especially at tackle, uh, at the Combine on Sunday. Yeah, I, I think... We could see two offensive linemen off the board in the first four picks, you know, or certainly first five. I, I think they will try to get one of these these center guard combo types if if you can in an ideal world because you add a tackle, they're going to probably add one in free agency, and then you add one in the draft, and then you add a center guard. 
I think you feel much better about your depth. And depth is going to get tested. They will not stay healthy at uh, the offensive line room this year. It just doesn't happen. So they got lucky there last year, even though injuries were an issue. So we'll see. But let's uh, let's get to defense. If we have any other notes on offense as well, uh, the offensive line, we can. But plenty to talk about on the defensive side coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Get buckets with FanDuel. And if you're like me, well, you're paying attention to the NBA. You're in on the NBA. And, well, hopefully you wagered on the Celtics on Sunday. Did you see that, Jake? The Celtics beat no. the Warriors by roughly 7,000 points. Wow. It was 84 to 38 at halftime. Mm. And, and then it got to 7,000. And so if you're thinking about paying attention to the NBA, maybe you want to get in on some NFL futures, get with FanDuel right now because new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. It's $150 in free money. If you had just put five bucks on the Celtics on Sunday, you would have that right now with FanDuel. And to sign up, all you have to do is go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. They have quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. Again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on to shoot your shot. FanDuel official sports book partner of the NBA. Some closing thoughts on offensive linemen. Taliese Fuaga and Troy Fatanu, I thought both had really good days in the drills as well for offensive linemen. They both moved, moved well, very, yeah. very well to the point where Troy Fatanu is being projected as a guard in the NFL because of his mm -hmm. play style and, and his demeanor as a tackle for Washington. But with those movement, skills that he put on display in those drills. I don't see how he doesn't get a try at least to stick a tackle before you move him inside. Um, I think that's my last, my last thought. Those two guys were particularly impressive for guys that I think are in the range for the Cincinnati Bengals. Last thing I guess would be Tyler Guyton. I know he has a 9.74 RAS, but he, he continues to scare me. Nothing that I, I really saw from him at the combine changed that. I I, I don't know. I, I don't quite see the the top level athlete that I was hoping to see from him, despite the the testing results. Good size, good length, good athleticism. Maybe not elite athleticism. And, and with the uh, the technique issues with Tyler Guyton, I'm still scared. I, I'm yeah, just. I get it. That's where I am right now on Guyton. Yeah, your boy Patrick Paul, by the way, tested well too. I'm excited to watch Frank Crum. You watch Frank Crum with that 9.99 no, and that hair from Wyoming? I, but that's that's what's interesting is like there are guys that where they could – you could see them doubling down, right, and, and taking one of these other guys. Like Blake Fisher, he's going to go day two, right? Get him round three, probably, maybe? I think. Maybe, yeah. But, three, but maybe three, that four like, is probably the range yeah. there, yeah. And so, you know, Christian Jones of Texas, we talked about him a little bit. He could be day three for sure at this point. You never know. But, yeah, I, th I think there are options. And it's it's up to the Bengals to find the right ones, uh, especially not just that offensive tackle, but defensive tackle. And I got good news for you, Jake. If you were in on Tavondre Sweat before the combine, all of the momentum is pushing him down. The first round status, and I think some thought, oh, well, he could push for first round just based on film. No chance. There is no buzz for that. I think there's a decent chance he's there at 80. Just the weight concerns. I, I know that there were, there are most evaluators, most teams are going to be like, hey, 366, you're going to have to lose weight. And that's a question. And it's, it's a question the Bengals have to answer of course but uh yeah you saw some of the movement though with him i i do think he's good like he's he could be really good but i, I do think he'll be there at the end of, of day two the drills went well for him and obviously he didn't jump great and he didn't run great but when you consider the size he actually tested like an 80th percentile plus athlete size adjusted and obviously size adjusted only means so much right like it does. Your, your size adjusted athleticism doesn't mean you're going to be able to chase down Patrick Mahomes or Lamar Jackson. It, it means you're, you're slow, but you're big. So, you know, the, the lower body explosion and strength is there, but at his size, you just can't get it moving that fast. It's just a lot of weight to be moving quickly. I have not changed my position on Tavondre Sweat. 
we'll see if he weighs in at his pro day. We'll see what he does at his pro day. This this reminds me of the Devon Jones situation last year, where he you know leaves the Senior Bowl early. Tavondre Sweat didn't do that. By all accounts, Tavondre Sweat's work ethic issues that were documented at Texas before his final year at Texas reverse course. And despite being a super senior, fifth year player, he's just 22 coming into the league. So it's not like he's 24 years old when he's finally mm-hmm. figuring things out at the college level. I'm still in on Tavondre Sweat, and I, I think his process will be interesting. Teams will be asking him to weigh in on top 30 visits. It wouldn't surprise me if he goes and visits most teams on top mm-hmm. 30 visits because he's such a unique player. And it certainly wouldn't surprise me to see if the Bengals bring him in on a top 30. But other guys on the defensive interior, unfortunately, and we knew this coming into the week, Johnny Newton did not test, recovering from an injury, hoping to get some testing for him at his pro day. But Braden Fisk, the headliner, Rook a row, 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 who's learned we've whose name we've learned to pronounce by watching him tell reporters how to pronounce it. Uh, another one that stood out on the defensive interior. And Byron Murphy cracking the 90th percentile. Chris Jenkins in the 89th percentile. Honestly, would have liked to see more from both of them, but Fisk and a row, 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 really putting on shows in Indy. They did. People saying they, they should take Fisk at 49. He might not be there at 49. I, I'm not sure if he will be. I think that's probably the range. He goes between 40 and 60, 40 and 55, something like that. I do think the dream of Byron Murphy and then getting Tavondre Sweat, keeping the Texas Longhorn duo together, I think it it's, could happen. You're right. There's a lot of things up in the air with Sweat, but I, I think there's a chance Murphy gets there. Probably not. I still think he probably goes top 17. And then the, the thing I will be very clear about, the NFL is lower on Johnny Newton than at least Bengals Twitter. But the NFL, the, there, I didn't talk to one person that expected him to go before the Bengals are on the clock. Yeah. Not not one. So I, I think he will be back end first round. Like I think he's in the the Sua Matia realm where he could be uh, Johnny Newton's still there I, after round one. I, I think there's a chance of that for sure. Yeah. I, I think that that's kind of been the trend we've seen from people who talk to league sources for a little bit longer, like leading into the combine. And he of course didn't test, didn't do anything to build momentum for himself, but we'll see how he does at his pro day. At the edge rusher position, Dallas Turner, Jared Verse, Layatu Latu, all turning in positive days. Chop Robinson, all turning in positive performances at the Combine if the Bengals are interested in an edge player. And then, I got to be honest, James, didn't pay attention to linebacker at all. Wouldn't be shocked to see the Bengals go linebacker on day three, but I, I don't think it's a priority. Did pay attention to corner, however, where Quinion Mitchell, had the second best performance at the Combine, according to RAS metrics. Max Melton, another guy that I've been kind of paying attention to throughout the process. Rutgers corner has helped himself through the Senior Bowl, continued to build momentum at the Combine. Renardo Green, a Shrine Bowl participant, had a nice day at the Combine. And and one that really stands out, unfortunately, for the wrong reasons, Nate Wiggins, uh, the weight issue there we talked about for Wiggins. He ran really fast, but... Weighed really little, unfortunately, for, for the cleansing corner. And I do think that will work against him for a guy that was talked about as a first-round player. Yeah, I, a couple of things. I don't think Nate Wiggins will be on the, the Bengals, but he's DJ Turner. I mean, it's very similar stature-wise. And so you already have that. And yet, Quinion Mitchell, if he's there at 18, I don't think he will be. I think he has a better chance of being a top-10 pick than he does making it to 18, but if he's there at 18, they are probably taking him over whatever guy you want. I think he's going to be really, really high on their board. There's no reason not. I I don't really know the knock on him at this point. It's been flawless. Pressed at the Senior Bowl, really, really great at the Combine, obviously had the the productivity that you want just at a small school. He checks every box. I think he's the first corner off the board. Would not shock me if Tennessee, they need secondary help, if, if as early as seven. He goes off the board, and maybe sooner. You never know who's going to move around, but I, I certainly think that he could uh, he could go off the bar- board early on draft night. I think Terry Arnold is still in that conversation as well with with Mitchell, but Mitchell helped himself. Wiggins, the the weight being what it was, I, I think that will affect him. And uh, on the topic of slot corners, that the Bengals are looking for the future Mike Hilton. Mike 
Sandra still from Michigan looks like Mike Hilton Jr. and studies Mike Hilton and, and seems like future. You, you Mike taking Hilton. him at 49? You taking him at 49? I think you have to. If, if like you have to, if you want him. Oh, Not sure. that they have yeah. to. Uh, it depends on what happens between now and then. But I, I also need to watch him. I, I am inclined to say that that would be a worthy pick, but depends on what else is going on. Right. There's a lot of variables when you ask me that question. Jerry and Jones, the other Florida State corner, corner to go along with Bernardo Green, by the way. Both of those guys, I think they, they, they tested great. They could be slot corners in the NFL. And, and I think they helped themselves as well. Wouldn't shock either of us, though, to see the Bengals go after a corner in this class. No. And some of them did move a little bit, I think, based on their combine results. In particular, I think Nate Wiggins' weight is, is going to be an issue for some NFL teams. Quinyan Mitchell, come to Cincinnati. It's a short draft from Toledo. Let's go. Let's go. Fall, fall to 18, baby. It's fall possible. to 18. One of, one I, of the, I think it's highly unlikely. I think yeah. it's highly unlikely. But but one of my takeaways with chatter that there's going to be four quarterbacks and potentially four receivers picked before 18 is that you can get to easily enough players that you like at offensive, at offensive tackle, at corner, at edge rusher, at defensive tackle before you get to some other positions. And and so that is one of the takeaways. I, I, I've seen some Well, there's one defensive tackle. There's one defensive tackle that could go off the board before 18. Yeah. But but oh. you, you see this chatter that there's this drop-off from 12. Frank Pollock saying, you know, after 12 that, you know, can take a little bit longer. What's the difference between 13 to 32 is kind of the same value. I don't necessarily agree with that this year i do think there's a top tier i think there's a clear divide between the second and third tier though in the first round like there's a true 1a 1b 1c this year which i don't know if that's always the case but there's a true 1b and the bengals are, are primed to pick one of the players in the 1b range sure it, and they have a chance at 1a because if, if terry and arnold and, and quinion mitchell go if four receivers go thank you brian thomas if four quarterbacks go, which I think is realistic, you look up and that one A Brock Bowers might be there. Look at me bringing it back there it to is. where we to, to to where we should be right now. No, I, it's uh, it's interesting. They're going to get a good player. There's no doubt about that. They should. Knock on wood. That's going to do it for this episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. We are pivoting to free agency imminently because while the combine has just occurred. Free agency is next. Uh, that is the next step of this offseason, so our content will be shifting that way as well. Until next time, thanks for listening to this episode of the Lockdown Bengals podcast. Hootay, and have a good one.